Hey what's up travelers, in this video this is the second part of my trip to the Bargello in Florence, Italy. That's a place where a whole bunch of the sculptures of Michelangelo, Bunarati, and Donatello are held. It's an amazing museum. If you want to see the first part of this, that video is right there. Go check it out and then come back and check this video out because in this video we're going to see the works of Donatello, specifically in the Donatello room which is upstairs, the, the second floor of the Bargello. There's a lot to see at the Bargello but I'm not going to show you all of it. But this is a really cool must stop museum if you end up in Florence, Italy. This is the Renaissance. So you're going to want to check it out. As we head up to the Donatello room, we run across Giambola's Allegory of Architecture. This statue was carved in the 1560s. The female figure holds a framing square, a protractor, and a compass, the tools of an architect. This, however, is a copy of the original, which is now lost to time. This here is the pottery room. There's a lot of really interesting and vibrant colors in this room. The question I get asked all the time is how do I fund my traveling to keep my YouTube channel moving so I can keep publishing content. Well I have a number of different streams that I have available to me. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in me making a dedicated video to that kind of stuff. Right now I want to tell you about two of them in particular. Some of you may recall that in the beginning of 2020 I ended up moving to Vietnam and I was there to become an English teacher. And that's really kind of where the food part of my channel took off. In the beginning of 2020 I moved to Saigon to become an English teacher. So you need a four-year degree and a TEFL certificate to become an English teacher in Vietnam. I had the four-year degree already, I just didn't have the TEFL certificate. A uh, TESOL certificate also works as well, it's actually a bit better. Unfortunately, many of the online TEFL companies are pretty scammy. They really can't be trusted to give you what you need in order to actually move and go work abroad as an English teacher. I found an in-person TEFL TESOL training company that is located in Saigon, Vietnam. It's called the Ninja Teacher Academy. It's an absolutely awesome company. 
I highly recommend it. In fact, it's known as one of the most trusted Tesla Tefl companies in all of Vietnam. If you get certified through them, there's a really good chance that you're going to end up working in the industry over there and you'll be able to stay long term. And the best part is, is it's run by a fellow YouTuber, Alex Stevenson from Ninja Teacher. So I went through and I passed the course and I got certified, but unfortunately, <laughs> 2020 happened. COVID showed up and it made it so I was unable to use my certificate because the world shut down and it just it just wasn't good timing on my part. Fortunately, Vietnam is now open again and Ninja Teacher is back up and running as well. Up here is a link to a video of an interview that I did with Alex Stevenson back when I was living in Vietnam and it tells you a lot more about the course itself and the company and in the description is an affiliate link so go click on that link if you're interested in teaching English or moving to Vietnam it'll help us both out in our dreams and goals so go check that out Here we have the Teste Virile male bust. This is one of Donatello's lesser known works. In fact, when I was doing research on this piece, I literally couldn't find anything about it. Donato di Niccolo di Beto Bardi, better known as Donatello, was a Florentine sculptor of the Renaissance period. He is also arguably the father of the Renaissance. He was one of the very first artists that was funded by Cosimo Medici, who commissioned Donatello's most famous work, the Bronze Statue of David, somewhere between 1440 and 1460. This statue was the first freestanding nude statue produced since the ancient times, arguably the first major work of Renaissance sculpture. There is nothing heroic about this flamboyant depiction of the fight between David and Goliath, but instead, Donatello eroticized and androgenized the prepubescent, long-haired boy king who stands naked, wearing only boots and a hat over the slain Goliath with one foot on his head, portraying David's underdog victory against the giant warrior. This amazing statue became the symbol and mascot of Florence, Italy, which was also known as an underdog city-state. Donatello sculpted a feather that climbs up his leg that is associated with homosexuality, Donatello was also openly gay and at the time was probably the only person whose homosexuality was socially acceptable. In fact, even Leonardo da Vinci was arrested for homosexuality around this time period. Historians believe that Donatello used a statue of the Roman Emperor Hadrian's gay lover Antinius as a model for David. The Bargello houses another bronze statue of the young David. This masterpiece was carved by Andrea del Verrocchio between 1473 and 1475. This statue is much different than Donatello's version of David, as it stands clothed and confident and arrogant while wielding a sword. He is portrayed as a hero standing over the severed head of the slain Goliath. Historians believe that Veraccio used his young student Leonardo da Vinci as a model for the sculpture. This is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ by Donatello. He made it in 1465 out of bronze with gold and silver. The gilding produced an effect similar to the lighting and painting of international Gothic style. This work is so incredible 
that many people consider it to be one of the most radical attempts to create a bronze relief that resembles a painting. It's absolutely amazing. The second stream of income I want to tell you about is investing in the stock market. I started investing in May of 2017 with a phone app called Webull. There is also an affiliate link down in the description to join this app. Webull is an awesome company. I absolutely recommend it. They are kind of like Robin Hood, except they haven't been involved in all of the meme stock controversies that really made Robin Hood look really bad. And it's also made Webull show that they're the app with a lot of integrity out there. And a really cool thing about Webull is they've always got some really awesome sign-up and affiliate promotions going on. Currently, if you use my affiliate link down in the description to sign up and then link your bank account and deposit any amount of money, you're going to receive six free stocks that could be valued up to about $3,500 each. I mean, granted, that's a luck of the draw thing, so you know more than likely they're gonna be anywhere from from five to ten dollars each but you could end up with a share of Google or Amazon or something like that and I think it's totally worth it and the best part is once you get those free stocks you can actually if you don't want to invest in the stock market or anything like that you can just sell the free stocks and then withdraw all the money from the account and never use it again however I highly suggest going ahead and just just play in the stock market. Invest for the long term. Don't don't be a trader. Uh, traders tend to lose most of their money unless they're really good at it. That's my suggestion, but I'm not a financial advisor, so take that with a grain of sand. Six shares that could be worth up to $3,500. At the very least, you're going to get $18 free out of this deal that you can just sell and then buy a company that you absolutely love for the long term or just withdraw it and then you have free money it's 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 quite the deal but what's in it for me right <laughs> you know there's got to be something in it for me or I wouldn't be making this video well currently they have a referral program going on that if I refer one person I get 17 free shares of stock that could be valued anywhere between three dollars and three thousand dollars a share that would help me out immensely in getting back on the road and creating more content they also have another promotion going on right now that if i refer one person then i get one share of apple guaranteed in that 17 shares a second referral I will get 10 shares so 10 shares of Apple amongst the 17 shares that, that I will receive and then if I refer three people it will be 15 shares of Apple and right now Apple's at about hundred and fifty dollars a share so if I refer three people just in Apple stock I'll be getting right around two two thousand dollars free and that would that could fund an entire trip just in itself and that would help my channel out a ton. So again, if you want to start your investing journey, uh, go ahead and click on the link down in the description to go join the Webull app and uh, let's make some money together. Now back Here to we video. have one of Donatello's finest works of his entire career, St. George and the Drag. It was created in 1416. It's based on a fairy tale about a town that is constantly under attack by a plague-carrying dragon. The people decided that once a year they would offer the dragon a sheep to try to bribe the dragon to stay away. One year they didn't have any sheep to give the monster, so they decided to give it one person every year selected by a lottery. One year the princess of the town was chosen. Panic set in amongst the town until St. George came to the rescue and slayed the dragon then married the princess. This is Donatello's Marble David, which he completed 30 years prior to the bronze sculpture. 
It was originally commissioned to be part of the structure of the Florence Cathedral, but it was too small when it was finished. So it was placed outside for the next seven years instead. Then it took a tour of pretty much all the buildings that are now the most important museums in Florence today. Finally settling in its final home where it stands today. Here we have Donatello's Marzocco, named after Mars, the god of war. It was carved in 1416. This intentionally symbolic sandstone statue depicts a lion with its paw set upon its shield with a red fleur de lis on a white background. This symbol became the flag of the city-state of Florence and a symbol of its militia. This is the Amoratus. It's probably Donatello's most hotly debated work. First, historians are unsure of its provenance, though they all agree that it is likely a Donatello piece. They also don't know who commissioned it, or for sure who the character in it is. Many believe that it is Cupid or Eros, due to his winged feet and carefree demeanor. However, others believe that this is Zadis, the shepherd who castrated himself in an act of madness, due to his genitals swaying freely from his trousers. We will likely never know for sure, but it is a truly stunning work of art to lay your eyes upon.